Okay, so we just got done staying all our cedar for our batch water heater, but something exciting just happened. We just got all our water filtration system uh, in the mail. What we're gonna be using for filtering our water, I'm gonna have a pre-filter, and then it's gonna go into this uh, carbon filter. Well, with this carbon filter, I have to pre-soak it before installation. So it has to soak for 48 hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that now. So as far as all the filtration and the entire system inside the pump house, we'll go into that a little bit later, just so it, once everything's hooked up and it makes a little bit more sense. Seeing how much water is in the tanks right now, it is so crazy. They are all at roughly 800 gallons. So we have 2,400 gallons from what, like three rains yeah. or something like that. Something like, that. like I can't even imagine when we hit the rainy season and it's raining every single day. <laughs> yeah. We're overflowing because we have so much. Yeah, good thing we have the overflow built because yeah, I don't think it's gonna take very long to fill these bad boys up. Bad boys. <laughs> what you gonna do? Spencer's hat got left on the ground last night and the one side was folded up. So now he has a pirate hat. <laughs> tank tops can hardly cover my bump anymore. Bear, what the hell? All right, so while Spencer is finishing up the siding on the batch water heater, I'm gonna go ahead and just paint the water tank over here. You can see we already have the layer of primer on, and now I'm gonna go ahead and just paint a high temperature black paint on it. High temperature, because obviously it's going to be getting very hot inside of the batch water heater, so it'll just help the paint withstand the temperature and then black because we want the tank to absorb as much light as possible. All right, buddy, can you go find the screwdriver for me, please? Can you find it? Oh, good boy! Oh, he's so good. <laughs> The batch water heater is looking great so far. Spencer went ahead and he just caulked all around the bottom of the frame just to help air seal it really well. And now we're going to start on the next step of the process which is insulating. So for insulation, what we're going to be doing is doing two layers just to help make sure that we can trap as much heat in there as possible. So for the first bit of insulation that's going in there, we're just using a bunch of leftover pieces that we had from insulating the cargo trailer that you guys saw. So he's working on that right now. It's a little bit more tricky than I thought it would be just because he's having to cut all these small pieces and try to go up under the frame. 
So it's just a little bit more time consuming than I thought it would be, but we'll get it done. The batch water here is looking great. All the metal is done and installed. So now we get to go ahead and take the water tank and place it inside just so we can get all the rough fittings for all the piping. And that way we can start drilling all the holes through the sides. to give you guys a little rundown of what's going on with our batch water heater we have all the insulation installed we started installing all the corrugated metal and then come today we decided to run a little experiment because we noticed out in the field there was a lot of sunlight being reflected out at us like blinding us so we're like that's probably losing a lot of that concentrated energy onto the tank so we took out the back side of corrugated metal and let it reflect onto the tank. The hottest temperature with the corrugated metal, we recorded on the front side at 141 degrees and on the back side about 135 degrees. After about roughly a minute to two minutes later after we took the corrugated metal out, the front side was at 151. I got 153 at one point. And then on the back side was uh, 145, I think it was 146, somewhere in there. So it obviously we were losing quite a bit of light concentration onto the tank by the corrugation of the metal. So we're going to leave the rest of the corrugation uh, on the sides and the front or on the bottom and front. But as far as the the back side goes, we're going to leave the foam the way it is because it reflects more onto the tank. And then we'll run a little strip of uh, corrugation or corrugated metal across the top just to protect the wood. But yeah, we figured the corrugated metal would heat the chamber a little bit more because it has more mass than the uh, foil face of the foam. But after seeing the amount of light energy reflect down onto the tank, and obviously the tank has way more mass than the rest of all the corrugation metal, it's just clear that the best route is with the flat face foil versus the corrugated on as far as the backing goes. All right, how confident do you feel right now on a scale of one to 10? About a three. No, <laughs> that's not what I want to hear. I'm so scared. I'm a little nervous too. <laughs> Oh 
Oh my gosh. Suspense. No, that's not what it's called. It's called the Suspensa. <laughs> looking like we're gonna get some rain. 